So what type of things happen when we put bentonite in water? And this is really at the crux of understanding how bentonite works in the, really the appropriate uses of conventional GCLs and when we need to look at other materials. This is actually a graph that's older than I am. Uh, 1957 uh, by a professor named Norish working in, people have been working on clay chemistry problems forever. Uh, and he created this graph that, where he had that spacing of the, of the inner layer, D001 spacing, as a function of a measure of concentration of the liquid in which it was hydrating. It's kind of a weird graph uh, because it's got one over the square root of concentration on the x-axis. But you can think of this as concentrated solutions here and dilute solutions over to the right, and then low swell and high swell. And what Norsch was able to show, and this is, this is where really a seminal finding with Montmorillonites, is that they, first it, they swelled in two phases. This first part called crystalline swelling, that's when you had the first four layers of water associate with the mineral surface. And, and that happens under essentially all conditions with Montmorillonite. You get this kind of coating of water around the particle. And then that space opens up, the inner layer space opens up, and we get so-called osmotic swelling. And that's the stuff that makes bentonite magic. That's what gives it that greasy kind of swollen material. And the amount of osmotic swelling, as you can see in this graph, just think of this as low swell, high swell, is a function of the concentration. And where we're very concentrated, we get essentially no osmotic swelling. When it's very concentrated, or excuse me, when it's very dilute, we get a lot of osmotic swelling. So the bentonite, the amount of swelling that occurs uh, depends uh, a lot on the chemistry. Concentrated solutions, it doesn't swell at all. Dilute solutions, it swells a lot. Why is that important? Go back to that slide right here. We have to transform it from here to there. That's that osmotic swelling phenomenon. If we go from that granular structure to that essentially amorphous gel, it's impervious. And we only get that if we get osmotic swell. All right? If it's only crystalline swell, that doesn't happen. Just uh, add a couple little animations in here. So I talked about how this effect is related to concentration. So concentrated solutions, we only get crystalline swelling. Very dilute, we get a lot of osmotic swelling. Uh, that's why one reason, for example, we put bentonite chips in a modern well in groundwater. That's pretty dilute a solution. They swell and, and seal wells really well. Um, we, another aspect that Nora showed is that the crystalline swelling occurred essentially with Regardless of geochemistry, we always got four layers of molecules, water molecules around them. The osmotic component was really sensitive to the type of um, cations that were in solution. So when you look at bentonite that you normally use, it's a sodium bentonite. It's got a sodium affiliated with it. It comes out of the ground like that because it was deposited in an ocean environment in salt water. Um, and osmotic swelling depends primarily on having monovalent cations, sodium, potassium, things that have a plus one charge. We have a lot of other things in waste containment systems in the natural environment. Calcium, magnesium, for example, deal with cold combustion products, a lot of calcium, sometimes a lot of sodium, it depends. So you can have a condition, a leachate, which may not have monovalent cations and may prevent osmotic swelling from occurring. And just to illustrate this in a very graphic way, I showed you the theory. I, this is an example, I, it's a photograph that's kind of dated now, um, but it's using the old, I don't know if you remember the GRI swell test for, back when it was Geosynthetic Research Institute, but the, it's the GSI. Uh, a, sw a swell test we ran a, to look at bentonites years ago, where we'd take a, a proctor mold and we would put in about uh, four kilograms per meter square of bentonite, that's essentially about a finger full, all right? Fill the bottom of the proctor mold, and then you would put a plate on top and you would put a, a, a dial gauge on it to measure the swelling. That tells you how old it is. You used a dial gauge. You know, we don't use dial gauges anymore. Uh, and then you pour the liquid on top, liquid of interest, and you watch how much it would swell. And so if you pour deionized water on there, which doesn't essentially dilute, really dilute water, you get a certain amount of swell. And if you took a strong leachate and poured it on, you get a different swell. And, and this illustrate, and this il there's a type of swelling we get, and this illustrates the effect of chemistry very nicely. These are pucks of that bentonite that were in a proctor mold in that old GRI swell test. Right, we took 
a, a GCL full of bentonite, put it in the proctor mold, so again about probably eight millimeters thick, put the ionized water on it and swelled to four centimeters or 40 millimeters. You can see the gel structure, right? There's no granules there, it's amorphous. It, it's, this is really nanoscale pores, highly impervious. We take a calcium solution, a stronger calcium solution, so it's concentrated. It also has divalent cations. We get something fundamentally different, right? We get this, what looks like a layer of sand. It's bentonite, but it's, it looks like sand. Impervious, pervious, no swell, lots of swell, and it's all driven by the chemistry. And if we look at this in the, you know, our swell test today, we use a, uh, a 100 mil graduated cylinder. We put two grams of dry bentonite in it, and then we add liquid to it, and we watch the bentonite swell. And depending on the chemistry, we'll get you know, something here. This one's right on the margin. It's about 15 milliliters. And if we've got a very dilute solution of good quality bentonite, it would be up in the 30s. You know? so we, we use this test frequently to measure swell for conventional bentonites and to get a sense for whether bentonites are, are compatible with the leachates of interest. 